In today's patron-selected video topic, we'll be talking about the fortress at Louisbourg, a French fortification during the 18th century in what used to be French Canada. And, uh, well, truth be told, when I was first looking into this video subject, I really couldn't think of anything to make a video about. I mean, sure, I could always go through a straight history of the location, talking about in such and such year, Lord so and so commissioned the construction, and then in such and such year, General such and such laid siege to it, and then Admiral so and so attacked the batteries at this location. And sure, it would be an interesting history, and it could well make an interesting video, but there's nothing really all that particular about it. I mean, I try in my videos to approach these things with more of a social perspective, uh, sort of offering a perspective that isn't necessarily the most common in our readings of history. So I wanted to find something about this place that would really warrant a more specific video rather than just having it be, oh, hey, uh, this is a place and it's kind of a neat place, so here's the history. You know, the sort of thing that really anyone can find on their own just by doing a quick little Wikipedia search for the place. So. I started reading up on the location, and I started looking for accounts that may be particular, something interesting that I could talk about. I couldn't really find anything there. Um, I figured I might talk about the various sieges and everything, which are interesting, but again, nothing really all that special. Well, it was only when I actually looked at a map of the fort itself that I found a ha ha ha. Here's something we can talk about. And it's not so much, of course, a matter of the actual fort, as you can see, but the location geographically of it. Because I, I began to ask myself, why? What's the point? Why is it here? Because you see, the entire purpose of the uh, fortress at Louisbourg, at least one of the main purposes of it, was to, from the French perspective, defend their entrance into the St. Lawrence River. Now you see, after the War of the Spanish Succession, the British took over large portions of French North America and French Canada. and. Um, Effectively, they reduced the uh, French presence on the Atlantic coast to really only the area where Louisbourg was. Uh, it was the only way for them to gain access to the rest of their holdings became suddenly through the St. Lawrence River. There were no um, other more direct passageways around through like the main area and whatnot because of the positions that the British took from the French. Um, the St. Lawrence River was immensely important in French Canada because that is where all the trade was taking place. That is how all the supplies were gotten to these regions. It's how the French kept up communication with their colonies inland other than going through, you know, New Orleans all the way in the south, which would be a massive journey to go up the rivers, you know, across the entire continent to the Canadian holdings, or even worse perhaps than uh, going through British holdings to access their own. That's a very bad idea indeed. So um, what, the, what the French have have to do, of course, is make sure that the St. Lawrence River is protected, and they build a fortification to do so, that being the fortress at Louisbourg. There are a few other reasons why it was constructed as well. Uh, of course, Louisbourg is in a very advantageous location as far as fishing deposits and things like that, so it was a very valuable location to have for a few other reasons as well, but, but mainly to protect the St. Lawrence. But then looking at an actual map of the location, looking at where it is in relation to the St. Lawrence River, I began wondering, well, now, hold on, how is this defending the St. Lawrence River? Look at how massively, you know, far, far away it is from the actual mouth of the river, and look at how massive the other uh, gap is, so to say. Why, if, if the French are worried about a British Navy or a British fleet going through into the area to wreak havoc all up and down the coast, why not build the fort somewhere nearer on the actual river to, to physically block the entrance, as opposed to just kind of being a vague threat in the corner that the British could just sail around, presumably. Well, for starters, Louisbourg was in and of itself an exceedingly important town. It was, as we mentioned, a very large fishing town, um, large numbers of uh, food resources being pulled in every single year at the location, and it is, in that way, uh, very much worthy of being defended on its own merits. Um, but what's more is, given the location of the fort, it is one of the few towns, Louisbourg was, um, basically in French North America and French Canada that actually had access to the Atlantic, but also which did not freeze over during the winters. Look at the map of Canadian, no, I'm sorry, of French North America, and you can see that after the British take the majority of uh, Newfoundland and Nova Scotia and whatnot, the French are 
very lacking in terms of access to the Atlantic Ocean, other than, again, all the way down south in New Orleans and whatnot, which is a completely different situation, of course. You can't have those two locations exactly supporting one another if needed. Uh, Louisburg becomes one of those few locations that is not extremely far north. And the thing is that Louisburg, because it had a proper, you know, a deep enough port for its ships to operate, it was one of the few locations that did not freeze. And so it was an area where the French could actually keep a navy, a fleet, um, without having it risk, without risking it, so to say, during those colder seasons, have it be able to actually escape from port at all times of the year and be able to conduct various actions all along the coast. It was a very large town on its own merits. It was able to, because of its size, support a fleet and it was able to actually support that fleet year round. So of course, it is going to be a very advantageous location. One of the few locations where the French actually can put not so much a fortification, but a base for its ships to operate from. It became, for that reason as well, a very significant fortification because if you have such an important base, the town is not only going to grow up much larger around that base, become a much larger and more significant uh, settlement than it already was, but also, of course, uh, it needs that further defense because it will be a target for the enemy to go after, as it were. Um, it was a very advantageous location for the French. And it is by that virtue of the town being able to sustain a large French fleet and to sustain it year around, including through the winter months and not have the free fleet be, you know, frozen in place, that it was able to defend the St. Lawrence River, not by virtue of its own fortifications and defenses, which indeed the fortifications and defenses at Louisburg were designed to defend Louisburg, to defend the town itself. You know, those cannon are not going to help you if the British have to go all the way around into the St. Lawrence, but rather to house the fleet, which in turn is able to defend the St. Lawrence River, or at the very least, to help maintain control hegemony over it. Not by virtue of itself, but by virtue of what it can sustain was Louisbourg so massively important, at least for the most part. You see, there are a few other reasons as to why it is so very uh, advantageous. Now, first off, again, looking at that map, imagine if the British did have to go around the fortress here instead of, you know, going along past it. Well, that is, it's, it's adding effectively uh, another layer of complexity for the British having to sail further north. Uh, basically, by placing the fortress there, you have a certain cone of fire all around the thing that uh, the British would have to either go through or go around. Uh, it is adding effectively more opportunities, this little strong point, which is not necessarily going to, you know, protect the entire region around it, but which is providing a, an, an obstacle for the British to have to maneuver around one more, and a series of obstacles, uh, it is, is allowing further time for your French fleet to be able to engage that enemy. And what's more is, of course, the fact that if the British are having to sail roughly in the area of that fort, they're sailing past, well, they are very far away from their own fortifications, so your fleet is able to go out, engage the enemy, ooh, we, we've suffered a bit of a bloody nose, you can go back into fort, recoup yourself, and then go back out again while the British are still sailing north. At least these are the vague ideas, uh, not necessarily anything that ever actually happened in this way, but this is the concept as far as why that location may be worthwhile. It is a base of operations very near the asset which you want to protect, being the St. Lawrence River, that the enemy does not necessarily have any so large a base to support their own operations. The French are able to use this hard point, this, this uh, defensive works, to sally out, engage the enemy, and then duck back in under the defense of the harbor. See, if the French fleet were to suffer a defeat, they can sail back into that fort and the British, if they want to pursue that fleet and perhaps defeat the threat and, you know, ensure that after they sail down the St. Lawrence, they'd be able to come back out again, well, all of a sudden, the French have a secure location they can retreat into. They won't be able to be touched. The British will have to be outside the, uh, you know, outside of that fort. And all of a sudden, what, they're going to be laying siege to the thing, which is a whole other different kind of operation. And again, it, it basically allows you to protect the St. Lawrence in that it is a distraction. It is, it is the... It's the thorn in the side, if you will, that prevents the British from effectively taking the area, or at least 
theoretically will prevent the British from taking the area, uh, even if it does not actually directly um, prevent that from happening by virtue of its own guns protecting the river immediately. Again, it is important not by virtue of its own fortifications, so to say, but by virtue of what those fortifications can achieve. It allows a solid base of operations for the French fleet and squadrons and pirates even to wreak havoc all along the New England coast, something which the British are going to have a very difficult time dealing with during these various wars. It allows for them to uh, have a launching off point for defense of the St. Lawrence. And of course, it allows a secure location for those fleets to retreat to and recover themselves should the situation arise. Again, a very good way, I think, to describe it is not so much as a fortification of the river itself, but as a hard point to allow the projection of one's force across the entirety of the area. And of course, this same logic of a fortress being not merely valuable in and of itself, as far as the, you know, the projection of force in the immediate area of how far those guns will reach, but also by virtue of it being able to be a base of operations, a, 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 a base from which one may project force across a very wide reaching area. That can be the value of a fortification. It does not have to be merely against that which is in range of its main guns. It is a point of power projection. And then, of course, there's one other thing that I thought would be worth mentioning about the actual location of Louisburg uh, before we wrap things up here, being that it is truly the perfect location for a naval base of operation. Imagine, if you will, that there is in fact a battle somewhere outside the walls of the fortification. The French fleet suffers a, uh, a minor defeat and they have to retreat into the harbor to um, sort of repair themselves before moving back out to engage the enemy. Well, naturally, of course, the British are going to pursue after this French fleet. They want to capture the thing. They want to destroy it while it's weakened uh, before it has a chance to revital itself. Well. The fortress, the actual outlaying of the fortress itself here, it actually funnels troops in to a very narrow gap where, as you can see on this map here, we actually have a triple crossfire of sorts all convening on that one central location. Now, why is it that ships are forced to move through that, uh, that more northern route there? Why not head through the southerly area, which if you look at a map, it looks as though that would be a very clear area to send sort of half the force while half the force moves north, half the more force moves south. And at the very least, you are having two squadrons at that way and, and you're splitting up the fire of the enemy's guns. Well, the southern portion of that entrance, if you will, is actually blocked off by natural reefs and by, by very shallow waters. You cannot send sail at least any ship of significant size through that area. And so if you want to take this fort, you have to actually, by, by way of sea at least, force your way through an exceedingly narrow gap on which the French were able to focus not only the guns of the town, but also the guns of the fort, and even the guns of a smaller, on an island out there, sort of in the middle of the Bay Area, uh, they, had a fort, they had an island that was referred to as Battery Island for rather obvious reasons. They put a battery of guns there. So if you're trying to sail along through, you're going to be suffering battery fire, gunfire, from three different locations all centered on that one incredibly narrow area. You will not be able to form a line of, bat uh, a line of battle to actually fire against the fortifications. They're going to be at elevated locations and they're all going to be firing condensed at you in this very narrow choke point. Um, very difficult to miss in that sort of situation. Uh, if you want, you can have your fleets slide right on through the gap hold themselves in the harbor, and then as the enemy is trying to move on through, just bombard them in that one central location. It is an extraordinary location as far as naval defense is concerned. Um, and in fact, this incredible natural advantage of the actual geography, of being a narrow choke point, of having that battery island uh, of all these different things uh, is the main reason, at least one of the main reasons as well, why this location was chosen for these fortifications, why they didn't choose any other smaller town to host this, um, the, you know, this winter port, if you will, for the French fleet. However, there is also a couple of natural features to this location which made it very vulnerable. 
in fact, the fact that the actual Bay Area was on very low ground, at least when compared to the geography around the fortification. And so, in fact, uh, inherently, no matter what, unless you fortify uh, separately all of the heights around the town, which of course would make it even more expensive, and this fortress, as it was, was exceedingly expensive. It ran massively over budget for the French. It actually prompted the French king, I believe, I think it was Louis XV at the time, to say that uh, given the amount of money that he's spending on this place, he should be able to see the fortifications from Paris. So really, the heights around the town were not really uh, as secured as perhaps they ought to have been to actually defend this location. And when the British did take the location, in fact, actually during the War of um, Austrian Succession, is when uh, New England militiamen, with the aid of a British fleet sort of bombarding and blockading the place from the outside as far as ways they can get, really, um, they're able to take the fort uh, by storm uh, over land, of course. That was the weakness of the place they were able to take over the thing. And then incidentally, actually, but okay, we're, we're rambling now, but um, funnily enough as well, uh, after the New England militia took over that fort, it was a really big deal. They were really excited about that. You know, they won a massive victory over, you know, the Gibraltar of North America, as it were. This was a big deal to them that they managed to take this just behemoth of a French fort that was defending so many French possessions into the St. Lawrence River and everything. Well, and then of course, uh, during the negotiating over in Europe after the War of Austrian Succession, uh, the fortress was actually handed back to the French in exchange for a few Few other concessions over in Europe, uh, which made the uh, locals of New England very, very upset because it, it felt, in a way, I'm sure, like their achievement was just pulled away from them by uh, by the you know by the domestic, by the foreign, by the home country uh, government. Uh, perhaps a, a bit of an early seeding of uh, distinction between us and them for the New Englanders, uh, something that, of course, would become much more extreme over the next oh you know. 30, 40, 50 years or thereabout. Now, before I wrap things up with this video, I hope you don't mind if I throw in just a very quick little uh, advert. Uh, not so much a sponsorship, it's not a sponsored video, uh, but an advert for myself, uh, because I have established an Amazon affiliate store. Uh, if you are so inclined to support the channel, well, you can go to that affiliate store, and um, when you purchase any of the items that I have listed there, uh, then I will receive a small portion of the proceeds from that sale. Uh, I also have, uh, down below in the description of this video, an Audible sign-up link. Uh, again, this is not a sponsored video, um, not in any way being supported by them, but um, if you do, uh, if you are so inclined, I should say, to get an Audible uh, 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 trial, uh, and as well you can get two free audiobooks with that trial, uh, then if you sign up using my affiliate link, then I will receive a small bounty, I think $5 per sign up of that 30-day free trial uh, for your using that link. So uh, again, uh, don't feel obliged to do so, but if you are so inclined to purchase any of the items I have listed there, or if you're interested in trying out audiobooks, then by all means, you know, feel free to swing on down there. Uh, get it through that means, and, and it'll end up supporting the channel in some way. All right, good, good, all right, advert out of the way. Uh, back to conclusion. So, um, thank you all so very much again for watching, and as always, of course, to my ever-beneficent supporting classes on Patreon.com. It, truly, it is by virtue of your support that I am able to continue making all of these wacky, zany videos. Uh, and then, of course, to you as well, my dear viewer. Thank you so very much for watching and spending this time with me. Of course, until the next time, I am and I shall remain your most humble and obedient of servants.